Hi everybody, welcome back on my channel. Welcome to Solish Fam and today is another day. Glory be to God that we are here. Today is the Lord's day. Today's always every morning is new mercies from God. So today's topic is about God cares. Now this is the second time I'm going to do this, but let's do it again. So as I said, I'll try to be here. Uh, just let's finish this journal that I have purchased a long time ago. So today is from Hannah Withal Smith. And I'm going to read what she said. It says, who is the best cared for in every household? Is it not the little children and does not the least of all? The helpless baby receive the largest share. We all know that the baby toils not, neither does it spin. And yet it is fed and clothed and loved and rejoice in more tenderly than the hardest worker of them all. This life of faith then consists in just this, being a child in the father's house. And when this is said, enough is said to transform every weary, burdened life into one of blessedness and rest. Let the ways of childish confidence and freedom from care, which so please you and win your heart and your own little ones, teach you what should be your ways with God and leaving yourself in his hands. Learn to be literally careful for nothing. And you shall find it to be a fact that the peace of God, which surpassed all understanding, shall keep as with a garrison your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. And quote. So today, of course, is alluded to what I said yesterday. Stand by your God. If you have not watched that, maybe you should go back and watch that video. But God cares. So it is a continuation of exactly what God is reminding us to do is that just like a little child it is also from the Matthew 6, okay? When we read Matthew 6, it says, Take heed that you do not do, uh, do not worry about the things of this world because the Father in heaven, actually, yeah, it's a Matthew 6 and verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What will you put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can one can add one cubit out to this stature? So when this writer, when this author has written about God cares, she is referring to a childlike faith. I'm not suggesting or I'm not saying, of course, that we shouldn't work and we shouldn't do something with our life because of course the then the moment you become an adult we have responsibilities we have family to raise we have bills to pay otherwise we're not going to be able to live in this world but what the author is suggesting is instead of worrying you do your part you plant the seed and you just have to keep doing it consistently and have faith in the lord that god is going to bring fruition into your life because I think that it is the law of nature. Whatever you plant, you're going to get a harvest eventually. You're going to be accountable in the eyes of God of what, what you do with your time, what you do with your talent, with your skills, and wherever you are in your job right now. You may not love your job right now per se. Most of us, we get tired and bored of doing the same task over and over again. But you got to have a different perspective in mind, being grateful of where God has planted you. It's all about growing in the present moment of where God is planting you. There is always a reason for the season. We may not always like it wherever God is, you know, putting us in a particular job. He has a purpose. If we really can just see the eyes of God, it's somewhere that says whatever you do, whether you eat or you drink, you do it unto the Lord. So instead of worrying of your circumstance right now, because for so many of us, we want to change our circumstances. Sometimes I always ask God, Lord, I'm ready to go to a different path. I'm ready to be shown to a different way. But sometimes God allows us to be steadfast and to just stay put, to have faith in the moment. And sometimes God will close doors and you don't understand why God is blocking opportunity sometimes or you're trying so hard to navigate and to maneuver things when God said all you have to do is have faith. You just have to wait patiently because in the moment when you are becoming a childlike spirit, God is developing your faith muscle. And we don't understand God's way because he says, my ways 
are not your ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways are higher than our ways. And so sometimes we think that we're better than God. We think we're smarter than him. And so what do we do sometimes in our in our instance, in our circumstance is we love to tell God of Lord, I want you to do this for me. I want you to uh, give me this right now. But the timetable of God is not the same timetable. Our schedule does not have the same schedule with God. Sometimes God is maybe allowing you to just stay back and, and trust him. Maybe because he's still preparing for something that you do not see. Maybe he's trying to protect you from something that you should not get involved in or the people that you should not get involved in or the places that you shouldn't go or the opportunity that is going to be a detriment to you instead of making you grow in spiritual walk with the Lord, but it's going to stunt your growth in your spiritual walk with the Lord. So sometimes we got to have this faith that if you do your part, if God can see you that you are thriving, you're doing your best, it's an excellent spirit. You develop wherever you are, whichever you are, God cares, whatever you're going through right now, even if people may not understand what you're going through or they don't see your effort, because sometimes we think that people don't appreciate us or we just do things for people and yet they are still ungrateful. We feel as though what's even the point of trying? We could have this tendency of, well, why should I bother? Why should I even care for people? Because people don't really care anyway. So why should I bother caring? So but we have to be reminded that God cares. We have to have a mindset of God and not the mindset of a man. Because if you're going to only think of, well, I'm doing this for people because I want to impress them, because I want them to like me or to love me or to accept me, you, you're going to be disappointed because people are always going to not sometimes appreciate what you do, even though you go overboard or you go above and beyond to serve them and to cater for them. But if you have that kind of perspective, as I said, some people are entitled and they're not going to be grateful for what you have done even though you bend over backwards for these people so you have to have this mindset of i'm going i'm going to do this for god and i'm going to trust him and i'm going to be faithful of wherever he has planted me and that is the story of joseph i know that you have been here before and i've always talked about joseph the story of joseph wherever he went he was always excellent in spirit he was you know sold to his to the slavery by his brothers and you know the story and so he plant, he was planted in the in the Egyptian the Potiphar's house but even though he was sold to the slavery he still was able to perform to outperform that he was the right hand of Potiphar's house he was promoted to be entrusted by Potiphar about overseeing his housework and how to be the ruler of his house when Potiphar would go outside or go away because he was you know one of the officials in that at that time in the Egypt in the Egyptians so but Joseph wherever he went even though he was in jail he also outperformed and he was an excellent man who always had an excellent spirit because he did not allow his circumstance to dictate how he behaves he did not allow the bad situation to make him sour, bitter, contemptuous, or have this idea of, why should I even bother? God promised me that I'm going to be, you know, the head someday that my family are going to bow down to me. Because remember what happened to Joseph? He had a dream at the age of 17 that his family and the people around him is going to bow down to him, that he's going to be at higher officials. But that did not happen until a few years down the road. Joseph had to wait. The same thing with David had to wait. David was running away from Saul and he, he was appointed, anointed, and was given this uh, prophesied by Samuel that you're going to be the next king in line. But also David was had this idea in his head that what what's God doing? I mean, I'm here trying to do the right thing, but the king, Saul, is trying to um, kill him because of his jealousy so but yet he was faithful and when you read psalm david prayed and pleaded god to intercede and to be his fortress in the midst of trials to be his anchor in the midst of trials and when you really have that kind of pers perspective 
that God cares, even if people might not care, even if you feel as though nobody cares, nobody understands me, nobody really gets me. But just remember that God does care. He cares for you on a personal level, on a deeper level, because He is a God who can empathize with us. He is a God that when we are coming to Him with submission and humility at heart, He is not a God that is blind or deaf. He is a God who is constantly aware of our cries and he knows he understands us of the painful things that we're going through because remember jesus was the man who became flesh and he dwelt among us so jesus can empathize with us he is our brother who knows exactly what it feels like to be lonely at times and to feel isolated and to have no connection with people because he was full god and full man so jesus sometimes could probably come on as the outsider jesus would probably was an outcast perhaps he felt as though i do not belong in this world because of course he did not belong to this world because he said i am not of this world the kingdom my kingdom does not come from here so this is why for most people we feel misunderstood and we feel as though we are the outcast or we do not fit in to the mold of our society we feel as though where do i fit in where should i belong and that's exactly why as a follower of christ as a child of god we have to be reminded that god cares he promised us that i will never leave you and never forsake you you have a helper and he's the holy spirit who's going to guide you and convict you and he's going to give you direction because god's promises are yes and amen and he will always follow through he will never fail us even if we may not achieve the things in this life, what we wish for or what we hope for, because God has always a purpose. And I was listening to late Dr. Charles Stanley yesterday about grace is sufficient enough. And I do love the teachings of Dr. Charles Stanley because it still invokes the reality of what we're going through today. That sometimes God said when he when we ask him for prayer sometimes he would say yes no wait and sometimes he would say my grace is sufficient enough and i have not thought about that and dr charles stanley is right sometimes god doesn't remove your situation or he doesn't remove that painful experience because he's trying to teach us something even if paul pleaded please take this pain from me three times he pleaded with god three times he prayed and he, he asked god he asked the Lord Jesus Christ, please take this painful, whatever it was that the Satan was buffeting him. So we don't know what Paul was going through. Maybe he had a physical infirmity or I don't know, something about his body that he said it was unbearable. It was something that he was struggling with. But in my own theory, and the more and more I think about it, I think God allowed that painful experience because one of the points that Dr. Charles Stanley said is that to humble him, to keep him on his feet and to be on God's face and to not go to the right nor to the left, but to focus his eyes on the cross. Because sometimes when we pray and we think that God doesn't care because he hasn't answered my prayer, I've been praying about this, I've been asking him to change my situation, I've been asking him to change the people around me. And when that doesn't happen, we think that God has forsaken you, we think that God doesn't really care. But ultimately we miss out on the bigger picture because God, in his sovereignty the same thing with paul he said in your weakness i will be your strength i am in your you know my grace is sufficient enough he was trying to protect paul from going above and beyond being egoistic because remember paul um let's go to the bell remember what happened to paul is that he was an educated man he had a lot of experiences a luxurious life he was a man of comfort he came from a, a man of in a scholars he knew a lot of people perhaps in his days and maybe paul had a tendency that okay i'm getting bored of preaching and traveling i'm persecuted right now i am hungered i am beaten i'm in prison and maybe i should go back to my old ways maybe i should go back to the old ways of living the comfort and the indulgences of life the luxurious way of living and maybe that was the mindset of paul that jesus said i will not allow you to go back to where you come from the backsliding spirit because we can be backsliding 
in our hearts we can go backsliding and 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 jesus had freed you from those bondage and sometimes god said i'm gonna make sure that you're not gonna go back to that bondage the imprisonment that you used to live because remember what jesus said uh, paul wrote that i am a new creation in christ the old is past behold the new things has begun so sometimes we miss out of why god doesn't answer our prayers but sometimes we don't understand the bigger scheme of things and sometimes god would says i do care for you this is why i'm doing this for you and there's also instances in my life that what i've been praying and god said you're not ready yet or this is going to be your demise i will not give this to you until you have learned this lesson so we must be aware that god does care even if we think that he doesn't really care because he hasn't answered our prayer or god how long should i bear with this problem how long should i endure with this uh, things that has been constantly the same problem as if nothing is changing in my circumstances but remember that in the midst of it all god is with us and god is not he has not left us god is for you he's not against you if god is for you who can be against you so we have to be reminded that god truly cares even if people may not care remember that he is present always you may not always feel him, but remember that he is unchangeable God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always been at his throne. Nobody has overthrown or vetoed him out. He is still the same from the beginning and the end. He promised us that I, the Lord thy God, I do not change. I will never change. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's who God is, even though we may not feel that his presence is real but remember the truth that he is always real okay so i will go now i hope that you're blessed with this message be bold be brave be courageous i will see you in my next video